going major with it though, man. What was the biggest difference between being independent and then hooking up with the majors moving around? Um, the difference between being independent and hooking up with the majors, I didn't. When I first came out, my record deal came about. It was brought to me, and it wasn't a situation that I wanted to sign. Mm. So when I got to the majors, I wasn't just smiling in everybody's face because I was in a place that I really didn't want to be in. So mm. you got a lot of people who I interviewed with that was big people. Yeah. And now they may say, Hurricane Chris got an attitude. I interviewed him one time. He didn't even want to talk to me. Well, what you don't know <laughs> is I was a 16-year-old kid, and I had adults around me um, guiding my decision-making, and, 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 and they told me, just trust me to make you a good deal and let's just do this. And I let them do it. And it still wasn't a situation I was 100% comfortable with. So, you know, when you make decisions that you're not 100% comfortable with, you always, you, you, you can never be happy with, with the girl that you're with if you, you, you don't really want to be with didn't her. You didn't choose her. You didn't choose, yeah, it was, she was kind of choosing for you. You Come always, on. you looking at every other girl that passed by, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, it was, it was that, that took a lot of the, man, I made yeah. it away from the situation. So. This is what made me want to refocus myself on finding myself and building myself financially and business-wise to be able to um, put my future in my own hands no matter what. At that young ass age, man, what was it that you started to get into to help you focus on them finances well, and the I, business? I, I opened a Chicken and Waffles just to, 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 to try to learn how to open the doors to something and, 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 and organize um, a restaurant. Um, and then I got into real estate rent houses and then I got into halfway houses with the state um, event centers. And I mean, just con it continues to dispensaries. And um, now I got a trucking company. Um, oh, God. Just, you know. <laughs> Making it do what it was supposed to do. Yeah, my mama and my daddy was real, real deal grinders. And my mama was a hustler business-wise. She mm -hmm. always wanted to figure out how to do some business. So mm -hmm. um, I think I, I felt like I always had something to run to when, when the music industry um, didn't, didn't do business the way I wanted it to do business. I was able to become my own businessman and create my own businesses that I can choose to do good business inside of. Um, become financially stable and then begin to look at doing music as a boss. So you set yourself up for the win, but that didn't stop you from making them hits though, Chris. You kept on jamming, man. Yeah. And you came back with a Halle Berry. Yeah. And that thing went crazy. But Halle Berry, I wasn't even dealing with the record label at that time. At this point, um, the record label had, had pulled the plug on my entire situation and was not putting out Nothing, they wasn't putting no bag behind me no more. They was really ready to try to shelf me. Yeah. Um. So I had to go out on my own and, and find a single in Dallas, Texas, with some cats and 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 some producers and and I end up getting a record and laying verses on it and making it my single. Um. And Halle Berry became a, a national hit. So at that point, the label hit me up like, "Yo, let's shoot the video to that." <laughs> <laughs> I'm still on the contract, so I gotta play ball. Damn, you know. Um, so it was just a crazy situation of of basically a label who wanted to use me for one single, but I kept getting another single and another single and another single. When really your goal was to try to juice as much as you can juice and then move on to the next situation. I just was so big, it didn't happen as fast as maybe they wanted it to happen. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's how I feel. What was that like for you, though, man? Because you're trying to have this success, but it seems like it's a damn dark cloud over this thing the whole damn time. Chris, what the fuck? I mean, that's the record industry. I was around people that they I, they had their own motives. You understand what I'm saying? Like, the, the people that I, I... I wouldn't say the higher-ups, but the immediate people that I was dealing with in the record industry had their own motives, and it wasn't to, you know, make sure that everybody was straight. It was to make sure they self was straight, so... You know, when you when you going through that and trying to put out music at the same time, it kind of make you just want to stray away from the situation. Yeah, yeah. When Halle Berry goes crazy, though, man, did you ever get a chance to holler at Halle Berry? Uh, nah, but I seen her <laughs> dancing to it on Ellen, <laughs> on the Ellen show. I seen her dancing What to was it. going through your mind when you made that song, named it after Halle Berry, and saw her cutting up to that thing? Man, I, I, was, I was in Atlanta at Hot Beats, and Ooh. the owner of Hot Beats um, was standing in the front, and they... They called me to the front to see it on the TV. Yeah. And I was like, man, that's crazy. Yeah, where y'all find that at? And I looked on my phone, it was real. Shh. Halle Berry. 
Did you ever feel like any of your dreams were ever coming true during these times, though, man? Or was it always such a damn grind behind it all in the politics of so the industry? So much politics. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard to feel like your dreams coming true and there's so many politics involved. Yeah. You're constantly fighting. You constantly fighting. The president of the world don't feel like the president of the world. He got a headache and he constantly fighting. <laughs> yeah. people, these people telling him to do this and these people mad at him because he did it because they wanted him to do this and now they're going to be mad. So it's just like I'm 16. At, at the end of the day, I was a kid. Um, of course, at 32 years old or, or, or even at 25 years old, I'm, I'm way more conditioned and know how to um, – not let a business situation affect me yeah until i don't know how to play chess now i'm a real chess player so i i, I know how to pay attention to what's going on and move accordingly 